Hey everybody, welcome to the full button tutorial of the 2022 Toyota Sienna XLE all wheel drive. And like all of my tutorial videos, we're typically going to start from left to right, then we'll work our way to the overhead features, and we'll finish up with the screen. Let's begin. So starting from the left on the door, you have auto down windows and auto up all around. It's a quick hard touch. You can stop it and do a hard pull and release. Or of course, with a light touch, you can operate it like a regular window. In front of the window switches, there's actually a button here that if you push, it will lock your windows with a little LED to show you that it's on. In front of that, you have the door locks with two little nubbies for the lock which is the same as on the key fob, so you don't have to look, you can just feel for the lock button. To adjust the mirrors, you turn this little round thing here to the L, and I can toggle the left mirror, neutral, and to the right, I can toggle the right side mirror. Down below on the electronic driver's seat, I have a forward and back motion button here with an up and down adjust, recline, and a four-way lumbar support for the lower back. Underneath the dash on the floor, there is a locking floor mat with two separate locks. It's a quarter turn to release. And once you fit it back in, you make sure that it's locked by giving it a little tug. That way it won't slide under your brake pedal. Working our way up the dash, on the left here by the actual door hinge is the lever to open up the hood. Above that, I have the electronic release for the locking gas cap, which in America is on the driver's side. And a very important button, which will turn off the power door option for the doors and the hatchback in case you want a quick sliding action. Above those, I have the button to turn off the traction control, which is part of the vehicle stability control. The main reason you'd want to turn this off is if you have a lot of snow or gravel slash mud and you don't want the system slowing down that wheel to gain traction and you want to allow for a little bit of wheel spin for that maximum power, for example, you're parked, you got a foot of snow, and you really want to just power out of that parking spot, you can just turn that off right there. When you shut down the vehicle and turn it back on, it re-enables this feature, so you don't have to worry about remembering if it's on or off. And then next to that, you have the auto high beams. The auto high beams will only work when the headlights are actually in auto. But moving back over to the right, there are a couple more buttons. This is a little symbol of a speedometer here with a light bulb. And if I push the down arrow or the up arrow, it'll actually change the brightness to the speedo cluster. And this will set up the odometer and trip. So say I wanna measure a trip. By pushing this button once, you'll see on the bottom of the screen here, the bottom right, I have my two trips, my service interval, and the odometer. Working our way a little bit more to the right, there's a flip lever here that if you pull down, you can actually telescope the steering wheel in or out, and you can lower it and raise it back up. Once you find that perfect spot, you just lock it back into place. Moving on to the steering wheel and stalks, we'll start with the left stalk. On the left stalk, there are a couple different selections. You have DRL off, which means daytime when the lights are off, there are no lights on at all. Auto, which means the vehicle is going to sense when it's dark, like nighttime or going through tunnels, and kick on all of the lights, including the headlights, taillights, interior lights, which will light up blue, and the auto high beams will be active during the auto. Parking lights, which will dim the headlights and create a very dim lighting in the front so people can identify you as parked, but you'll also have taillights lit up so people can see you, and your interior lights will light up so you can see your controls. And manual headlights. So say you didn't want to do auto, you want all of the lights on now, you can do that. And an example of when you might want to actually have this option is if it's daytime but it's raining and the auto feature did sense that it's still bright enough to not need the taillights, but you decided that since it's raining, you want your taillights on, that's a great situation to use that. Speaking of rain, the fog lights operate like this. So off and on for the fog lights, which will turn off when your high beams are on. Then of course, if you tap this real quick, you'll get a three little signal. And to the right, those are your quick merging signals. Of course, if you hold it down like that and release, it'll keep it forever. On to the right stock. We have the operation for the wiper blades. So if I click this down once, down this way, 
It puts me in the intermittent phase and I can change how often they go. But since it's dry, I don't want to waste the wipers. If I clicked it down again, it goes to low. And if I click it down again, it goes to high. I can't change the speed when I'm in low and high. That's only for the intermittent phase for when it's like a light misting outside or light rain. Back here operates the rear wiper. I have off once in a while or on. Do note that the intermittent phase here is not affected by this. It just goes once in a while on its own. And on the top of the stalk, I have these two symbols here. They represent the front windshield, which is a wedge, the rear windshield, which is a square, and the little dotted lines are the washer fluid. So if I pull this towards me, it's gonna wash the front windshield. If I push it away from me, it's gonna wash the back windshield. Now to the steering wheel. On the left side of the steering wheel, there is a pad with four arrows, an OK, and a back button. These arrows are actually going to go through the different menus, which you can see on the top of the MID screen. There's different symbols there that light up. I can select the different items there to change them, and I can hit back to change my menu. We will go more into the MID soon. This button here is to answer phone calls or hang up phone calls, or if you just bought the car or you have a different phone, you hit this and the screen will prompt you to set up your Bluetooth connection. While on a phone call, I can also change the volume right here. And if I'm listening to music, I can change the volume right here. This is for voice commands. Now, if I push this once, the Toyota interface. Before you start, consider viewing the available video. Gives you that little beep. Please try. Of course, she didn't know what I was saying. But anyway, you get a beep like that bell, and then you say what you're saying, and then it will beep again to let you know if it recognized it. If you're connected to the Apple CarPlay, you can press and hold this for three seconds, and the little Siri orb will pop up, so you can command Siri. Same thing with the Google Assistant. So you kind of have three different ways that you can use the voice commands here. In my experience, I find the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to be a little bit quicker. But once you get the hang of the Toyota version, it's also very convenient. Moving on to the right, we basically have the cruise control, lane departure alert, and a couple more music buttons. So starting on the bottom now, the mode will actually move me through AM, FM, Bluetooth, or Sirius radio, which all new Toyotas come with 90 days for free. This will go through my different songs and presets, and the lane departure alert is right here. When I push lane departure alert, on the top right of the MID, I get the little symbol of the car going out of its lane, and to turn it off, I can just push it quick. On some Toyota models, you have to push and hold the lane departure button in order to turn it off. The rest of these buttons here are the cruise control. So you'll see the cruise control symbol there is a little car with an arrow. That's the radar cruise control that has distance settings. If I was to press and hold this button for three seconds, I'm gonna get a different symbol that looks like a little arrow on the left there. So let me turn it off. I'm gonna push the button once. That's my radar cruise. But if I push it for three seconds, it changes to constant speed cruise control, which is the old school cruise control that we've known for many years. Once I select which cruise control I wanna use, which most people just like to use that one, I hit set and then I can increase the speed or decrease the speed right there, which it will be shown right on the MID screen instead of making you guess, you'll actually get a digital speed. I can cancel it like this. I can resume. I can also cancel by pushing the brake. When I'm in the radar cruise control, I can set the following distance here between three different sensitivities, and that will also show on the MID. I find from user experience that the middle one works the best for me, or even the close, the far one is really far out and the vehicle is gonna break a lot based on what's happening in front of you. And now new for the Toyota Safety Sense, the lane departure alert also comes with lane tracing assist, which will keep you in the middle of your lane. When we get to the MID, which is coming soon, you can actually change the settings and sensitivity to all of this stuff here. But speaking of which, Let's work our way to the Speedo Cluster and then the MID. So for the Speedo Cluster, you'll see these two big gauges, one on the left, one on the right. The one on the left is going to be basically what would be your RPMs. You'll see here down by the blue, it says charge. If the needle dips down, it means the vehicle's charging. And that will happen while you're driving, it's supposed to. 
the green strip here is going to be basically if you're driving more economically and then once you get into the white power band that's when you're really getting on it and you're driving with more power down below that you'll see the temperature for the engine and moving on to the right you have an analog view of your speed and your fuel which next to this little symbol here for the gas pump there's an arrow pointing to the left just to signify that your gas door is on the left side and a fun fact about Toyota hybrids, you can tell it's on not because you can hear the engine, but because you see this little green ready symbol here on the left. Once that green ready symbol is solid, it means the car is actually ready to drive, whether the engine is on or not. And then up above, you can see that there is a little red symbol there for park. That just means that the parking brake is on. It doesn't mean I'm in park. I can tell I'm in park because on the bottom of the MID, it says P. But when I take it out of park, you'll see the red releases because the parking brake disengaged, and when I put it back in park, it re-engages automatically, which you'll see more on that when we get to the buttons near the shifter. Next, the MID. So the MID, that's your helper screen. This is gonna give you important information about the drive and what the car is doing. So I can use the arrows on the steering wheel like we saw that are on the left-hand side pad. If I go from side to side, there's different menus. So starting from the left menu that has a little leaf symbol, that's gonna be my eco menu, so the first page is gonna be my digital speed and my distance to empty, but if I hit the down arrow, I have more information on my driving and economy and additional stuff here like my eco score, so I can really keep track and try to beat myself for my economy. If I push down again, it goes back to the beginning. Over to the right, I have the next menu, which is kind of like my navigation menu and gives me a quick glance of what's going on with my lane departure alert, steering assist, lane tracing assist, and the radar cruise control. It's gonna alert me when it's sensing things in this menu. To the right, I have the menu for music, so that's gonna show the song and the artist that's playing. Next is gonna be trip information. So I have the trip distance, total time it started, a quick overview of the all-wheel drive system and the hybrid system here, individual tire pressures. There it is, the all-wheel drive system. So those little bars will actually show you a graph of how much power is going to each wheel. If I go up two pages, it's just gonna show you basically an energy flow. That's gonna be a quick energy flow diagram, which is gonna be more of an abbreviated version of what we will see here when we get to the infotainment screen. But back to the MID. So I have a couple cool pages in the information chapter. If I go over to the right, now I have settings. This is where it gets a little more advanced. So the lane trace assist, if I push and hold okay, I can really do some advanced settings. So I can take, keep the lane center on, turn it off, the steering assist that kind of pushes you back in your lane I can turn off if I don't like. I can do a vibrational alert. Sensitivity I can change. The sway warning if it senses I'm sleepy it'll give me a warning and the sensitivity to that. Then I hit the back arrow on the steering wheel. Now I go to pre-collision system. That's the system that's actually going to sense when you're about to hit a person or another vehicle and it's going to alert you in a bright orange and white brake symbol right on the screen and if you don't brake it's going to start stopping for you. But keep in mind, it's not a self-driving car. So if I press and hold OK, I can change the sensitivity and that's about it. Of course, I can turn it on and off right here. And if I turn it off, I get a warning symbol right there in yellow. Now I'm gonna turn it back on. Blind spot monitor. Only the brightness to the little symbols on the mirrors and the sensitivity. The blind spot monitor is the feature that's gonna light up a little yellow light on your side mirror when somebody's riding in your blind spot. Here's the parking sonar. So the parking sonar is great because it's gonna start beeping as you're approaching an object when you're parking. And the closer you get to it, the faster it's gonna beep. So if I push and hold okay, I can change the volume. Or I can simply turn it on and off. So say I'm backing up to a trailer and I don't want the beeping, I can just turn that off real quick. Rear cross traffic alert is kind of like blind spot monitor's best friend. They work together. When you're reversing, the rear cross traffic alert is going to alert you when it senses motion like traffic going sideways. So it's going to kind of be keeping an eye out for cars that are going to, you know, start driving right by you. So say it's tough to see in the rear view camera, it's going to just kind of startle you and let you know, hey, there's some movement. Next up is parking support brake. So you'll see a little symbol there of a car backing into a cone and a little star symbolizing it's hitting. The parking support brake works with the parking sonar. And when you're getting too close and about to hit, it's actually gonna break. So back to my example about towing a trailer, which by the way, this vehicle has 3,500 pound tow capacity. So assuming your trailer fits within those specs, 
and you're preparing to back up to the trailer and it keeps beeping and braking and preventing you from linking up with the trailer, you can just turn off that braking feature and leave it off for as long as you need to. The road sign assist is gonna read some basic road signs and it's gonna actually show you on the MID. And then next here, some vehicle settings. So when I go to vehicle settings, I have the passenger side doors, and if I tap that menu, I can really do some advanced settings here. Like I can only I can do the hands-free option on one door but not the other if I want to, and I can change the volume alert to be individual for each. So say I have a passenger that happens to be a little bit afraid of sound, I can turn it off completely. Say I have a passenger that the loudest sound is a little too much for them, I can turn it down a little bit. Say I don't want the hands-free to be on one side, because I have a child that keeps kicking the van, I can just turn it off and tell them it stopped working. That'd be crazy, right? Funny. The PBD, if I select OK here, I can actually change the kick sensor. And I can go down to the opening adjustment. And I can change the hatchback opening adjustment between five different opening adjustments. Check out the Sienna playlist because I have a video on why that might help. But for a quick example, if you're parked in a garage and you don't want it to open and hit the ceiling and I can change the volume to the hatchback adjustment as well. Next is the backseat reminder. I get asked all the time why does the car have a backseat reminder? Well folks we live in a world where people do actually forget children and animals in their back seats. So they come standard with this on so that you never accidentally forget your most precious cargo in your Sienna. This is your tire pressure warning system setting. So when I hit OK on this, I can set pressure. I can do the identification. This is a little bit more for service or if I rotate the wheels at home and the units. Down again, I can just basically reset my maintenance data and my oil maintenance. More stuff for when you bring it to the dealer, they'll take care of that for you. And lastly, I have language and units for the cluster. So that little symbol up there is a speedometer and I can change the language in units. So say I'm traveling with it or shipping it. This little EV badge, which you happen to see on the top next to the eco symbol, that comes on to let you know the car is an EV. That means it's an electric vehicle at this moment. That means at this moment, the engine so happens to be off so that you never have to guess. Say this little guy coming on and off distracts you or you don't really care or you don't want people to know, you can turn them off just like that. It's cool that they give you the option. And then here's where I can change some of the hybrid system and fuel economy settings for the menu, music display. This is where I can kind of edit the way these different chapters look in the MID. Then of course here I have trip summary. I can edit my eco score stuff, clear that. The pop-up display on the screen, voice control. These are more advanced settings for how these things are going to display on the screen. Now you see the little EV badge disappeared because the engine just turned on. So yeah, total advanced settings here for the screen. You can even turn the MID off completely. That makes things a little more streamlined. Say it's just a lot of information and it's too much for you to process and it's distracting. You can turn it off completely, which really does give it a nice streamlined look keeps it simple. It's easy on the eyes. If I hit one of the arrows again, it goes right back. And I can set default settings. So say I'm frustrated with some of the changes I made and I want to start from scratch, I can default it. To the right, the warning menu. So this is the warning menu that'll show you messages. If the car needs service, if service is coming up soon, if one of the sensors sends something and the car is trying to tell you that there's an issue, if you hit something and one of the sensors is messed up, pretty much all the stuff that the car is trying to remind you of that's really important is gonna be there. And if you ignore it, it's gonna keep a little orange symbol that looks like that warning symbol. It's actually gonna stay orange and go down to the bottom, which is convenient. If I push to the right again, we go back to that regular menu that most people like, the digital speed with the distance to empty. Before we leave the MID, on the top right here, you have your outside temp. On the top left, we have the time. The bottom left, we have what gear we're in. And the bottom right, we have the miles on the odometer. Or if we push those odometer trip buttons, 
I can push and hold to clear my trips. Just like that. Maintenance miles, back to odometer. And that concludes the MID section of the tutorial. Next up, we're gonna go to buttons by the shifter. So for buttons by the shifter, I'm actually gonna start a little bit further down by my arm and we'll work our way up to the shifter because to me, this is the whole kind of shifting control unit. So we have a little fin here, which is actually designed for hanging uh, purses, diaper bags, beach bags, grocery bags, whatever you wanna hang so that it doesn't roll around when you drive and spill its contents. You can hang it right there, which is great. I have two separate USB and USB-C plugs right here. Check out my review on the van to see how many chargers are actually in this van. By pushing this button, I release the giant chest of storage with two more USB plugs. Flip up cup holders, and now that we get to the shifter, I have a couple awesome features that we're gonna be using daily. So first of all, drive mode. The drive mode button, I can select up and down. When I push up, the MID will light up red. That means it's in sport mode. When I pull it down again, it'll go black for normal mode. And when I pull it down again, it'll turn green for eco mode. Up again for normal, up again for sport. Sport mode's gonna give me a little bit more power. Eco mode is gonna be a blend of the two. Sport mode's gonna depower me and it's gonna favor keeping the engine off as much as I can. If the battery has regenerated more than 70%, which is normal for this flow to go up and down, but if it's over 70%, I actually have the choice to hit EV mode and it will keep the engine off as long as possible. Of course, after certain speeds, it's gonna kick the engine on, but say you're driving around the strip mall at lower speeds, I can just turn this thing into an EV and keep it an EV, which is great. Now, you can see that the hybrid battery is just under 50%, so if I push this, it's gonna beep and let me know that it's not available. See? That's not a warning symbol or a warning menu, it's just telling you it needs to regenerate a little bit more, so don't be worried when you see that. It's totally normal for the hybrid battery to get really low and go all the way back up and sometimes just bounce back and forth in the middle depending on the type of driving that you're doing. I'm skipping this for a moment. Here's the parking brake lever, which I don't have to push. They give you the option for when you bring it into service or say it's super cold and you drove through some water and you don't want the parking brake to freeze. You have the option. But for most people, they just leave it the way it is. And when you take it out of park, it releases on its own. When you put it back in park, it re-engages within two seconds. You don't have to look down to tell if this is on because it gives you the little symbol here in red. See where it says park? And you can even hear it and feel a little bit of pressure change on the pedal. It makes like a sound. Pro tip, keep your foot on the brake until you see it says park and then you take your foot off the brake and it won't roll at all. Now, here's the button I really like, the brake hold. So you have to be buckled up for this feature. All right, so you're buckled up. You're going to go on a drive in your Sienna, and you're thinking about going to the drive through or you have a lot of busy city driving, or you're just going to be doing a lot of stuff where you're shopping. There's a lot of stop and go. When I'm in drive, it does not work in reverse, which I'll discuss why for a reason. I can push this button, and on the display here, I'll see the green hold button, but to the right of it, I see hold and gold. Once I see it says hold and gold, even though I'm in drive, I can take my foot off the brake and the van doesn't go anywhere. So the green just means that the feature is on. The gold means it's working, which is important to identify because when I give it a little bit of gas, the gold releases and I start driving. And when I come to a stop again, watch this, the gold pops up and I can take my foot off the brake and I'm hanging out. It's not designed to work in reverse because this makes it statistically a lot easier to forget what gear you're in when your foot is off the brake and you don't want to accidentally reverse into somebody. And if you're in traffic, you're not doing reversing anyway. Stop, go reversing doesn't really exist in traffic, at least in the United States. Share with me if you've been through that. But once you see the gold and I'm chilling. The key is if you go to turn off the vehicle, it's gonna yell at you and tell you to put it in park. I can just turn the feature off like this and it's off. So yeah, great for the drive-through, great for the city driving. It's an awesome feature. Let me know if you've used this and if you guys like it. Couple more buttons by the shifter here. Of course, we have another USB plug. 
the little flip door. That's the one that operates the Apple CarPlay and the Android Auto. I have the power button and the hazards. By the way, hazards are great for communicating drivers, but I'm not treating driver's ed. But yeah, if you're slowing down really fast, use those. People will kind of sense that you're slowing down really quick. The power button. To turn the van off, you don't need your foot on the brake. You can just turn it off and the gauges go dark and it gives you a summary. To start the vehicle, you do have to hit the brake and push the push starter button, but you don't have to hold it. I see a lot of people hold it. You just give it a push and it waves at you and it says ready right in green and that's how you know it's ready to roll. Now here's the fun part. Let me turn it off. Before push button starter existed, we had turn keys. So you would, without pushing the brake, you would just turn the key once and it would give you the radio. You would turn it again for a second time and it would give you the display and the climate as well. And then you'd crank it to start. Well, guess what? With the push button starter, you also have it working in the same exact way. So without pushing the brake, push the button once and you get the radio, which is the same as if you turned that key forward one click. Without pushing the brake, if I do it again, I get the display and the climate. But do be advised, we're running off of the car battery, so it could drain your battery pretty quick. But say you just need it for a few minutes, awesome. And then to start it, I just push the brake, and that's when I get that little ready symbol, and my driving needle will raise from the off position. That's how I know the vehicle's on. And I also know the engine is off because my little EV badge is on. So I hope that helped you as far as the push starter button because it does more than just start it, it operates your accessories as well. Next up, climate control. So for the Sienna climate control, the great thing is you still have a tactile manual climate control that's not operated from the screen. So if the screen is ever lagging or going slow or breaks, God forbid, you can still operate your climate control and you're not stuck towing yourself to the dealer. So starting on the bottom row, we'll work our way up. I have the heated seat button here, three different heat levels for the driver, three different heat levels for the passenger, nice little LED display. I have the auto feature here, which will make it operate like a center, uh, central climate control in like an apartment or a townhouse, or if your house has center, why can't I find the word? Central air, that's what I'm looking for, where you have the vents on the floor and on the ceiling, the central air system where it just automates that's gonna be auto there. I can turn it off. That means there's no airflow. I can turn it back on by just pushing up on the fan speed. My front and rear defrost are next to each other, which makes sense because I'd want to use this one if I'm using the other one in the foggy or snowy weather. Then I have the AC and recirculate next to each other because in the hot weather, I would want to use these together because you're cooling air that's already cold. And then this button here actually turns off the rear vents and it will make it so only the front vents work. And if I do that, the rear will kick on. So yeah, this button is kind of like a, a airflow symbol going to the front people and an X for the back people. So when you want to X out the back passengers, you'll see this rear bubble go empty. But when you hit that, it turns the rear bubble back on. And I use the term bubble because that's what's kind of helped me remember what I'm looking at when I look at this display here. And speaking of which, on the upper part of the climate control, you have these two main levers here with the blue and red arrows for temperatures. And I can do two separate temperatures if I want to. What's also nice is my rear passengers have their own separate temperatures as well, which I can change here or they can change from the back setting. Another nice thing about Toyota's climate controls are, notice how each lever is next to its symbol. So when I'm changing this temp, it's literally right next to it. When I'm changing this temp, it's literally right next to it. And to access the rear, it's right underneath the rear bubble. So when I hit rear, the rear bubble is going to increase because we're now using it and changing it. So I can change the rear left, the rear right, or I can use the sync lever to synchronize them all to the driver. If I hit rear again, it brings me back to the main control and takes me out of the rear bubble. So I can access the rear, exit the rear, access it again, exit it again, and it gives me easy control on what side of the van I'm on. The fan speed lever is right here, which has a symbol right by its button. And then for air direction, they call it mode. I can change the airflow, which the symbol is right next to the button. So say I only want it in the front and I want to turn it down a little bit right there. Say my passenger is cold, but my back passengers want to match me. Say the kids in the back are complaining that they're too uh, 
they're too hot still, I can hit rear. I can turn them both down even more. Then I can exit and we're all happy. Now say my back right passenger is a little cold but my back left wants it really cold, I can go into the rear and turn the right up a little bit, exit the rear, and now we each have our own unique happiness. Now say I just got into the van and this is what's left behind after a family outing and it's just gonna be me alone. All I have to do is hit sync and it synchronizes the whole van to the driver and I can change everything to match my setting. And say nobody's in the back and I don't want to be cooling the back, remember, I can cut it off completely. And that summarizes the climate control. Let's move on to the overhead features and then we'll finish up with the screen. Okay, so for overhead features, we'll start with the mirror. When you fold the mirror down, there's a little flip lever here with two lights. And there's a little symbol here that says slide. So there's not gonna be a slide out piece of plastic, but when you detach this, you can slide it for when the sun is in that awkward spot. But up above, like I mentioned in the overview, you have a really tiny conversation mirror so you can point and talk to and see your rear passengers. The safety connect button. So if you get into an accident, you can push the button and tell them you need help or if there's an emergency. If you get into an accident and the airbags go off, it's actually gonna send a signal out immediately. It's a great value. It's complimentary for the first year on every Toyota. I can make sure the light don't go on when I open the door, have the lights go on when I open the door, or turn all the interior lights on now. If I want to power the map lights individually, I can select the little, there's like a little lever here, a little notch. That's where I'm supposed to tap it, right there. And then the lights in the back of the cabin have their own little button. Here I have the open and close for the side doors. You don't have to hit the selected area. You just, or actually, you know what? I was wrong. They updated it. And that opens up the power door. Now in the power door, you do have a handle right on the back. There's a button down below here where they can pull in the handle outside or push the button. So there's multiple ways to close it. So that's nice. And then I hit the close section close it back up and do remember if I don't want the power door option I can turn it off right there and I can have the doors become quick sliders and then there's where I can open and close the hatchback that's also going to be powered and it's height adjustable just like we discussed if I push the button it's going to open up but I think I'm a little close to that rock wall so I'm not going to do it but I can also operate that from the key fob it's a push and hold for the side doors and then it's a push and hold for the hatchback if the hatchback's opening and I need it to close, I can just tap it and it'll stop, and then I push and hold and it'll close. The last buttons that we have here are the sunroof buttons. So you'll see these two interesting symbols. You have the one symbol that shows the sunroof is completely open, and then you have the other one that shows it's ventilated. So on some Toyotas, the ventilate button will say up and down, and this will say open, close. So it's interesting that they gave us symbols now. When I push this button, it's going to ventilate me and then I push down to close it. So that's great when I want just a little bit of airflow and what's nice is I can ventilate, but say I don't want as much sun. I can leave a little crack and it will suck air out and create a nice airflow in the van or I can close it. And then if I push and hold this for two seconds, I can release and the Sienna sunroof will open up. It will open up about four fifths of the way because this is the most optimal position for noise reduction. But of course, if I push this button a little more, I have the maximum opening to get plenty of that vitamin D. To close it, I just push and hold it for two seconds and release, and it will close all the way. And then I can block out that sun, say it's a little distracting on the screen. Boom. Lastly, for overhead controls, we have the auto dimming rear view mirror. And I have to film it at this angle because the light is kind of playing with it and making it hard to focus. But you'll have a little green light right here that's going to show. That means the feature's on. This is the light sensor that's going to sense the lights behind you, and it's going to dim on its own. If you don't like the auto dimming feature, you can turn it off with the power button right on the right hand side. And I also have home link for three different garages. And that summarizes the overhead controls. I saved the best for last. Now we're going to work with the screen. So the Toyota Sienna screen, it has huge black bezels on the sides 
And like most Toyota screens, but not all, you have these two nice big dials with a very tactile grip and four main buttons above each. Sorry about the reflection, I'm doing my best here for you. Toyota does put the most important buttons on the left side. So starting from top to bottom, we have the home button, menu, audio, and map. The home button, which we're on the home screen right now, is gonna access the home screen, which shows you different information all at once. When I tap one of those segments, it's actually gonna take over the screen. Of course, I can go back to the home screen right here. The menu is going to go to a couple different apps or widgets, whatever you wanna call them, where I can access things that I can make changes on. This is actually just gonna get me to the audio source. But if I go to setup, that's where I can change some audio settings, which we'll get to. So I can access the audio. I can access the phone, which is also on the steering wheel. So say I wanna hook up a phone or I just wanna see the phone menu. I can also access the phone from the phone button here. So everything is interconnected. For apps, it will prompt me to download Toyota's Entune app suite which you'll want to download on the App Store. It's gonna give you some basic apps that you can use on your phone. Uh, to me, it's a little bit more of a primitive version of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but definitely check it out. For projection, this is where you're basically getting set up for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And onto Info, this is where I can see more information about my drive and my economy. So here's the diagram of the hybrid system, which we went into a little bit of detail on the overview of the vehicle. Be sure to check out the link down below on the crash course hybrids, but you have your engine, your two electric motors, since it's an all wheel drive, and the hybrid battery. There's no mechanical connection between the front and back axles, so they're, they're powered on their own, and that's what gives you that lightweight efficiency and less moving parts. This diagram is gonna show you an energy flow of what's going on. So if you're driving off of the battery, it's gonna show the battery powering the front and back axles. If the engine is on, it's gonna show the power going to the wheels, depending on where that energy is gonna go. If you're only, oh, well look, the engine just kicked on, so we get an example. So now the engine decided it's gonna turn on to send some energy to the battery to recharge it. So these things are all working in the background and you'll get to see what it's doing at a glance to learn more about the hybrid system. Of course, when we spoke about the MID screen, there's an abbreviated version of that as well. But when I hit the home screen, I so happen to have an abbreviated version of that right here, showing that the engine is replenishing the battery. And back to menu, I can go to, oh, sorry, I wanted to show you this. I can see some vehicle alert history there if it's trying to tell me things. And if I hit history here, I can see my gas economy based on every drive that I've done. And it does it in real time as well, which is really cool. Back to climate. Now, I mentioned that I prefer the climate control to be a tactile manual climate. You can make it digital if you want to as well. Pretty interesting that they even give you this option, but it's nice because if some people have a hard time understanding and doing this, this might make it a little bit bigger and easier to see. And since, you know, us here at Toyota have people of all walks of life and ages, if they don't have the best time operating this, the six inches of height and bigger font might work out better for them, which is great to see. Also, since we're in the main menu here by hitting the menu button, there's a really important button, the display. When I hit display, I can turn the screen off and it'll go completely black and I can listen to music and have the screen off. I can still change the volume here or here and the screen won't come on, but to make it turn back on, I can just hit any button again and it turns right back on. But of course in display, say that screen's a little too bright, I can go to general and I can turn that brightness down a little bit too. But I'm gonna put it back to factory settings. For those that are a little bit in the colorblind side, you can change contrast, you can change some advanced settings there, and so on and so forth. Oh, and just real quick as an example, for the contrast, Say I need a little bit less contrast, I can change it here, and by hitting this, it'll give me a quick view of what that screen looks like while I change it. It's not super advanced, but it kind of does help. The last one in the menu is gonna be setup. So for setup, I have two pillars here. The simpler one is gonna be on the right where I can change the clock. I can change the language, 
I can customize my home screen. So say I want it to be a two layout with only two, I can change it like that. And when I hit home, there it is. But say I want more information, I can go to setup, customize home screen, and I can change the layout. I can even make it four. But say I want one of these to be bigger and I don't need the clock, I can turn it into three, which is my personal favorite. And I like when the phone is down here and I like when the audio is big. I think the phone is more important to be on the bottom so it's easier to reach. And let's see what it looks like. So when the phone's connected, you'll see four little slots here. And if you tap and hold, you can set four people where they're just a tap away from a phone call, which is really nice. And then when your music's playing, you can see your artist, the song, and how long the song is going for. That would be my personal setup here, but it's nice that you can change it. Here's some projection settings so I can turn the Apple CarPlay on. Android Auto, etc. can even turn the beep off see so say I don't like the beep say it's a little annoying for me or too stimulating for one of my passengers for theme setting though I wish Toyota offered us more it's nice to see you have two lighter ones so you have two day modes and two dark modes I personally keep mine in dark mode all the time but for the purpose of not having a lot of reflections we're gonna put it back here and these are a lot more advanced keyboard settings and stuff like that, which I'm going to skip over. On the very bottom portion here, you can check for software updates. And going back up, we get to the top, which is the more important stuff that most people are likely to change. So to, to digest this a little quicker, say you just need to change the clock real quick and you're in the home screen. You just hit menu, setup, it's right there. Now onto the left pillar. When I hit Bluetooth, it's going to be the same thing. It's just going to prompt me to connect the phone. When I hit audio, I can change a couple different things here. This is stuff that I feel like people might not really be getting into, but I can manage favorites, the number of presets I can change. Toyota comes with 36 presets, which is a lot. That's a lot to remember. Say that's a little bit too much and you want to do like your top six, you can change that there. That's something I would personally do is reduce the amount of favorites because I feel like you just get lost in the sauce, but to each their own, at least you can go up to 36. Then down to phone. Again, it's just going to prompt you to connect to Bluetooth. The voice is an interesting menu, so you can change the voice volume here for your voice uh, audio technology for when you're using the voice commands. You can train it which is really cool. We're not gonna do that right now, but when you hit start, it's like a five minute thing where it has you read a bunch of weird sentences and it learns your voice, which is nice because I will admit that Toyota voice recognition can be a little wonky for some people. So you might wanna take advantage of the, the training. Then you can go back to default for vehicle. So ready, we went to menu, setup, and down to vehicle, cause you're gonna like these settings. The car has to be on to change a lot of these settings, but when I go to vehicle customization, I can change the door lock settings. So this is sweet because most new cars, when you put it in park, the doors unlock. And when you put it into drive, they lock. See? Say you don't like them to unlock when you go into park, you can change that. So the automatic unlock by shifting to park, I can go ahead and turn that off or I can even change the door that it does. You can make that very unique to you. Even with the remote, to press two times to unlock the whole vehicle, I can change. I can even select which doors unlock. The auto relock timer from when it has been unlocked. I can change that timer to a shorter or longer interval. Very nice. And also, these two are some of my favorites. So all Toyotas from the factory have a pretty loud beep and a double beep when you unlock it, and bright lights. Say you don't want the feedback lights, you just want the beep, you can turn those lights off so the car will not blink when you're locking and unlocking it. Say you want it to blink only, but you don't want it to have a tone at all, you can change that. Say you want to lower the tone of the beep or make it a little louder, you can do that, which is really nice to make that unique depending on your needs. Say you don't want to disturb your neighbors, say you don't even really want to be known, so you want it to be super quiet and discreet. 
say you work in law enforcement or you work for the FBI and you don't want everybody knowing every single time you get in your car, it's nice you can change that right there, which is awesome. So just to reiterate, that's menu, setup, and go down to vehicle right there. Also, you can do valet mode, which makes you enter a code, dealer info, just some basic stuff there. But back to vehicle customization, the climate settings. The auto AC mode will make it so the AC comes on when it typically thinks it should, which I suggest you leave on. Light settings is another one. So when you turn your Toyota off, the headlights are going to stay on for a little bit to light up the driveway so you can actually see where you're walking. You can change that. So the exterior lights auto, you can have them stay on for longer if you want to, which I personally have them set for longer. I keep hitting the back button when I don't need to. The interior lights, when you turn the car off, will stay on for a certain amount of time so you can see what you're doing. That's another thing that I set for a little bit longer so that I didn't have to um, be in the dark. I usually take a little more than 15 seconds to get my things together. The daytime runner lights do actually give you the option to stay off even if you're an auto, which is interesting. So that means if you turned off the daytime runner lights in auto, You'll have no lights in the front when you're driving during the day, but when it gets dark, everything kicks on. I don't personally suggest this. It is nice that they give you the option, but do be advised, daytime runner lights save lives. It's not worth saving a few bucks on bulbs. In my opinion, guys, for safety, just leave your daytime runner lights on. They save lives. The headlights auto off timer, right there. And the headlight auto on sensitivity. So this will change how sensitive it is for when it's getting dark. So say you're driving at dawn or dusk and you find the headlights are not kicking on on time or they're, they're kicking on too soon, you can fix that right there, which is great. All right, so we were in the vehicle settings. Now we'll go down here to Wi-Fi. This is where if your car is equipped, you can set up your Wi-Fi trial and you can turn this into a hotspot. Great if you live out in the mountains. And this is going to be the same as the and to an app suite that I told you about where you can change um, the detection of an iPhone app where it can kind of push it onto the screen. But like I mentioned, the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is a little bit more of a superior version of what this is trying to do. But with that being said, that's all of the menus here in setup. So we went over the main menu. We went over setup and all the things you can change. Audio just brings me to my audio, which, like I mentioned, is your different sources. You just tap them. There's a little button here to reorder the order of them. This will light up once the USB is plugged in. For map, it's going to warn you that you need a navigation app. You can download Scout GPS link if you want to, but if you have a smartphone, which most people do, you can plug it right into here, and when you hit map, it's going to show you Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze, whatever you're into, which is great. Less important buttons they put on the right hand side so you can track for when I'm listening to music. If the passenger wants to access the phone menu, say we're connected to their phone, they have their own phone button where they can access and play with this. Of course, if you're connected as a driver, you can just hit the phone button. And then, like I mentioned before, apps for the Entune app suite, you hit that and it's going to show all the apps that you have. But let me update this. When the car is equipped with Remote Connect, which is available on some Toyotas, you'll have a trial where you can remote start it from the Toyota app on your phone from anywhere in the world. You can also lock it, unlock it, start it, turn it off, see where it's been parked. You can set guest driving parameters. And when you first buy your new Toyota, if it has remote connect, when you hit apps, there's going to be a little app that says authorization for the remote connect, which I want to show you what it looks like if it's on here. There it is. So that's where you do your notifications, set up your Wi-Fi, or authorize your remote connect, which is a great feature to have. The going rate right now in 2022 after your trial is up is $8 a month. I don't know what it's going to be a few years from now. Um, Toyota used to let you pay $80 for the year, but I believe they just took that away, so you're kind of stuck on the subscription. But it is really nice to be able to start it from anywhere in the world and, and lock and unlock it. Tune and scroll for the radio power and volume if you don't want to use the volume here say your passenger wants to change the volume 
And that summarizes the screen. Quick digestion, home screen is where you'll spend most of your time. Menu is where you're gonna go to turn your screen off or change some quick settings like the clock or your vehicle settings. And audio is where you're gonna access your radio and map is where you're gonna get your navigation. Say your ways. And I hope you enjoyed the tutorial of the 2022 Toyota Sienna XLE all-wheel drive. Let me know if there was something I left out that you wanted to see. In my tutorials, I mainly go over all of the driving buttons. Of course, there are a couple levers back there. Nothing crazy. If you need me to go over that, I'll gladly discuss it in the comments. But yeah, I hope it helped you. Share it with somebody that you think it will help. Like it if you liked it. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.